Hi everyone, it's Sarah, the owner and maker behind Multifarious Nature. Thank you so much for joining me today. If you are a new viewer, welcome. And if you're a returning viewer, big welcome back. I'm so glad you guys are here. So this is a unique video. Uh, this is not my normal content that I, I usually do, but I wanted to take this on. So if you are here and you read the title, this is going to be all about frogging. I have two projects in particular that have been lingering on my shelf, looming over my head that I knew I wanted to frog and I've just been ignoring it. And I'm going to do it now. I'm going to sit down and do it. And I decided if I record it and share it with you guys and we frog something together, I will get it done because then I don't have it lingering, which is no good for anyone. It's stressful and nobody needs that in their life. So for those of you that have those lingering projects hiding in the corner somewhere, in a closet tucked away, underneath your pile of works in progress, or in like the no man's land somewhere, I challenge you, go grab your project. Pause the video right now, please. Go grab your project. <laughs> go grab it. We're going to frog something together. Come on. You know you want to. You know you need to. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> All right. So I'm assuming you grabbed your project. So we're going to do this together. All right, so I've got two projects in particular that I've got here. Um, I'm for sure going to frog one of them. I will frog the other one either during this video or I'm just going to go get another one <laughs> or do it afterwards. So this was a beautiful shawl that I had every intention at the time of starting to finish. And I started this probably about a year ago, two years ago. I think it's been two years now and I never finished it. It's the Leander shawl. It's an Alpha of Expression Fiber Arts. It's a really pretty shawl. It really is, don't get me wrong. I just think I was uninspired. I kept messing up too. And instead of ripping back and starting over, I just kept going. And then it got more and more screwed up. And then I decided I'm done with it. So here we are. This is where I'm at. This was the Leander shawl. Um, yeah, I definitely screwed up. And we're gonna, we're gonna frog it back, you guys. So, I don't know if there's like a rhyme or reason of how to do this. And I'll probably talk a little bit about the frogging, but we're, we're frogging. We're frogging now. I am taking it apart. Um, you know, there, there may be like a rhyme or reason of how to frog this appropriately. I'm just going to go through and do it the way I do. So the way I like to do it is basically like hand wind it so that it doesn't become a god awful mess. And we're just going to do this. So this has been knit up for, like I said, about a year. Let's see, at least a year. It could be almost two years now, you guys. I'm not even kidding. Like, this is what I mean by things just fall into the corner. And I'm sure you've got those and you're like, oh, I'll finish it at some point or I'll work on it. And you've totally lost passion for it. You have no desire to work on it. That's what I'm talking about. Those projects that just sit there and, and give you the dirty look. And then when you finally get to the point that you're going to do something with it, you're like, I'm not going to do something with it. <laughs> I'm just not. Because maybe you're on to the next shiny object, right? Like my new Tadden, or when I have my new colorways that are staring at me, or Advent knitting. Like, I want to work on that shiny object. That's a new shiny object. I want to work on that. So, yes, I... <sighs> I don't have a lot of projects that I frogged. Not that that's a big deal or anything. I mean, um, most of the time I can uh, make something, finish it, and enjoy it. And I'm grateful for that because there are many that make something and then they go, you know what, I don't quite care for that. So that was like a waste of my time. <laughs> uh, the I do have a sweater in particular that just popped into my head that I knitted. I, it was one of my first long sleeve sweaters, I think, that I made. I think it was. I think it's the brick sweater. I think that's the pattern, I'm pretty sure. The brick sweater. I used, um, not, yeah, Let Lopi, um, uh, from, it was a vintage Let Lopi that I found off of eBay, which was a super fun find. Very exciting. But, I haven't worn it much. I wore it a couple times when I first knit it and 
I wore it last year when I, I would go outside in the morning. I like to knit early in the morning outside when I can. And it was super cold. And that was great. But I did notice it seems to be growing. The sleeves, I I kid you not, I blocked it once. I don't think I washed it since then. And it's, um, yeah, it's a little big. It's a little big. To the, I don't mind loose, but it's loose enough that my sleeves are very loose. They're long, too. Like, they come way past my cuff, so I'm not, I don't like wearing it if I'm going to be doing dishes and stuff because it gets, oh, it gets in the way so bad. It'll, like, dip into the water. It's no good. Nobody wants that. Nobody wants that. So I I feel like that's going to be one that I'm going to have to rip back. And that'll take some strategy because, like I said, it's let low be, which is not exactly unspun yarn, but it's almost unspun yarn. So it kind of, not kind of, it becomes one. <laughs> it kind of felt a little bit. And I mean, now granted, I only blocked it. I think I've only blocked it once. Um, probably washed it maybe once or twice and because I didn't wear it that much so you know wool really takes care of itself for the most part so I don't know I don't know I'm, I'm probably gonna rip it back because I don't it's such nice wool it's a shame for it to be just sitting in the closet and it could be a, a wonderful sweater that fits better that I will wear and enjoy and that's, that's the key, you know, that's the key. So I think I'm going to do that. That's a project I've been thinking about recently. So these have been lingering on a shelf staring at me up there. I have a shelf up there and it, it has a couple projects, like my works in progress. And then it had this, these ones I needed to frog. And I just have like blatantly ignored it for way too long. <laughs> way too long. Like, I think I started working on this. I am pretty positive this was the year that I got married, which we've been married now three years. So it's probably been lingering, like I said, two years at least. But what are you guys ripping back? If you want to comment below, I'd love to hear what you're ripping back. Maybe why, if other than, I mean, if you can rip back if you, however you want, but <laughs> did you lose passion in a project. That's what happened here. I mean, I just, I lost the passion for it. So uh, I'd love to hear what your motivation is. If you want to share that below, I'd love to hear about it. And maybe what wool, or if you know, like what kind of wool you're knitting with or acrylic, you know, whatever, whatever you're working with, cotton. I'd love to just, just hear about what you're up to. Um, guys, do you have any holiday plans? Like, what are you doing for the holidays? I'll tell you what we're doing for the holidays. Oh, I'm switching colors now. There we go. So what we're doing for the holidays, um, if you did, if you saw my last video, some of this will be repetitive, but if you didn't, um, <laughs> so we are going to be traveling to Chicago area to see my side of the family um, for Christmas, which is awesome because for two years now we went up north. We normally switch every year and I, I don't know what happened. I think, I think because of everything going on in the world the past two years, like I, it's as though, anybody else run into that? Like it's as though the past two years got all jig, like majiggity or like all weird and your years are all out of whack. Maybe it's just me, but I've, I've talked to multiple people that are kind of like the past two years got really confusing. <laughs> I don't know. It's weird. Anyway. Um, yeah, but one thing I've thought of and comment below what you think of this, because I just, I don't know. I, I love to follow some of these podcasters that do like a vlogmas and they don't have to do the daily vlogmas. I like those. I do like them. So those that make that good Lord, not only effort, but like take the time to do it. That's a lot. Of, that's a lot of work. So those that do that, I, 
I do appreciate it, and I enjoy watching them. But I also enjoy watching even the ones that do it like once a week. But see, here's the thing. So I, I podcast, my, my usual podcast with like updates, works in progress and such. I usually do that once a week already. So I was thinking if, this is a big if, because I don't know how to edit photo videos. I don't know how to make them all fun and sparkly with music and all that. I just like to sit here and chat with you guys. Um, if I do a Vlogmas type situation, it would be weekly for sure. I just can't do it every day. I know I can't. It's, it would be silly for me to pretend that I can. Um, like, would, like, would you guys think it's, it's okay if I did just one video a week? Does that make sense to you still? Because I feel like if I do my Vlogmas video, I would probably do it similar podcast style. It would just be very Christmassy because you know, I'm all about the Christmas holiday. So I would probably, it would be very Christmassy. There'd be like decorations in the background, but I still would be talking about Advent. I'd be talking about, you know, my projects, my works in progress, because my works in progress are going to be Advent oriented. So for me to do like a separate podcast seems silly because it basically would be duplicating what I'd be talking about for the, like a vlogmas thing. I don't know. I'd love to hear your thoughts. I, I like the idea of it, but I just don't know if, I guess it wouldn't really matter, right? I mean, if I just call it vlogmas during the Christmas holiday season through December, then you would just know that that's going to be the more holiday oriented podcast is basically what it is. It's just, that's what it is for me. I don't, like I said, I don't video edit. I don't, uh, I'd love to learn at some point, but I just currently got a lot on my plate. <laughs> I got a lot on my plate, but I, I mean, I enjoy it. I enjoy every minute of the things that I'm doing. It's just, it's a lot of, it's a lot going on. So got to be realistic. So, oh yeah, you can hear all kinds of noise in the background. Like I said, I am in the country, if you guys are not aware of that. So if you're new, uh, I currently moved to the country. We are out in the country. I mean, we're in the country to the point, this is going to sound very city of me, but uh, <laughs> I grew up in what's considered the suburbs an hour or so north of Chicago. So I'm allowed to be that way. I'm allowed to be city. <laughs> but anyway, we had neighbors walking pigs outside down our road. Like that's that's like when I say we're out in the country, that's what we're talking about. And my one of my neighbors has horses. She has, I think or at least at one time had 15 horses. I don't think she has that many currently, but she uh, rehabilitates horses, which is really cool. So, you know, I hear horses constantly. They're our neighbors. <laughs> so, and we, like I said, we have chickens now. We have a chicken, a rooster, and a duck. The duck has finally figured out he is a duck a little bit. He still goes to bed with the chickens and wakes up in the morning with the chickens, but he um, now goes into our little, little pond. It's a very little pond. If you had two ducks in that pond, it would probably feel crowded to them, but it's a decent sized little pond. I mean, we like it, but I don't know. It's cute. It's really cute. He splashes in there. Now he's gotten to the point where he's confident enough that he dives down under the water. It is so cute, you guys. It is so cute. He dives under there and swims around under the water and then comes up. I didn't realize, I guess I didn't, I don't know. I, I feel like I know a lot about ducks and birds, but I just didn't realize like how much they really dive under the water like that and hold their breath for that long. It's impressive. It really is. He's so cute too. Oh, so cute. Anyway, do you guys have animals? Do you have 
pets? Like, what kind of pets do you have? We have two dogs. So, and if you have uh, dogs, I'd love to know what breed they are. Not that it matters, but just curious. We have a, a mini Aussie. He is a purebred. And then we have uh, a mutt, my Rory, which the more people talk about it, they're like, oh, she's got whippet in her. I don't know. Maybe. Could be whippet in her. It's possible. She does like to cuddle. She is a cozy dog. She is the one laying by the fireplace right now. But she likes to be cozy. Anyway, I am getting there slowly. This is quite the pro process. But I'm telling you, I am committing to it. I am going to finish frogging this. Because then this wool can be used for other things. And it won't be haunting me as a project that just did not come to fruition. So... <laughs> Better to have it as accessible wool to use in a new project than wool that is just lingering there. So I'm to the point now in this project where it is um, every other row was this gray color and then the other was this um, like variegated colorway that I have. So it's a little tedious because I have to switch between each color ball that I'm winding, which is a little tedious, but this is something that needs to be done. And uh, the other thing that I would do if I was doing this and not chatting with you guys, I would definitely do this while watching like a movie or something where, you know, you can just chill and get it done. But speaking of movies, I was just watching uh, Pride and Prejudice, the one with Keira Knightley. Oh my gosh, I just love that movie. I, I enjoy Pride and Prejudice, period. I really do. But this that version with Keira Knightley, the music, oh my gosh, the music and the cinematography, absolutely beautiful. I, I really enjoy that one quite a bit. So I was watching that before I realized I needed to record. So I didn't finish it yet, so I definitely want to finish it. But... I, I'm now that it's cold. I'm definitely getting bit by the uh, baking bug. Anybody else like like to bake? I'm trying to do more like gluten free baking, which is actually not as hard as I thought it would be. You just have to buy like gluten free flour and that kind of thing. But um, I have apples. I made a ridiculous amount of homemade applesauce. I love homemade applesauce. It's kind of my thing now. <laughs> Every fall I've been making it for the past couple years and I just, I love it. It's so good. It's so much better than store-bought applesauce. Oh my goodness. The flavor alone, it's so good. And I was talking to one of my um, buds at work and she completely agrees. Once you have homemade applesauce, you're spoiled and store-bought stuff just doesn't cut it. But, so I did that the other day and I canned up a bunch of it. So it's, now I can have that in our cold cellar. We have cold cellar downstairs, if I didn't mention that before. So I canned up a bunch of peaches. So I have peach preserves downstairs. We have peach pie filling downstairs. We have peach salsa, which is actually extremely delicious. I've never had it before and oh my gosh, it's amazing. It's like the perfect balance of it sweet and savory. Oh, it's so good. So did that and we, oh, that was the other thing we've been doing um, semi-recently. We gathered a bunch of chestnuts, so, or hazelnuts, hazelnuts. We have hazelnut bushes and we gathered a bunch of those. So if you, you probably saw them in my uh, Instagram video uh, for my stories under our fireplace, they are currently roasting. Not like roasting, roasting, but they're drying. They're definitely dry, I need to pull them. But that's the best spot underneath the fireplace. It's so cozy under there and it just helps them dry. So I have a bunch of those that I need to actually roast crack them, roast them, and then I want to make homemade 
hazelnut butter, and I'd love to make like a, a homemade Nutella. That would be delicious. But we'll see about that. Because <laughs> that's going to take a lot of cracking of nuts to be able to do that. So we'll, we'll see uh, how ambitious I am when it comes to that. Because my hands just get tired quickly. But, but yeah, I want to do some baking now. And I have a couple apples. I saved just a couple. I made a bunch of applesauce, but I saved just a couple apples to bake with. Because I do like baked apples items like apple pie. I won't make apple pie like full size apple pie because my husband doesn't like it and I'm not going to eat it all. That would be, whew, that's a whole pie. So I made little mini pies and froze them so I can pull one out when I'm in the mood. <laughs> and then, um, all right, all of that one is done. Um, yeah, so I want to make apple bread is what it is and it has a delicious like crumble on the top so I'll try to take a photo of that when I finish it I'm gonna make it actually after I'm done with this it takes a good hour or so to bake so it's gonna be a process but it's totally worth it it'll make the house smell amazing it's actually gonna add more heat to the house as well so excited about that but I think that is that. So I do obviously still have a more of this to do, but I don't want to ramble forever and I don't want to make this a super long video, but I primarily wanted to do it to one, motivate myself to get this done and I'm going to. I've started it now. I'm committed. I'm committed. But it's also because I wanted to like, help motivate you guys to do it too, because sometimes you just need that little motivation, you know? I finally kicked my rear in gear and decided I needed to do it and I figured if I do it as a video I'll get it done. So that is that but we will I will make something with this this yarn at some point. It's really beautiful yarn. It's an alpaca blend from Hobby Lobby. It's called um, Delish boutique. It's absolutely beautiful yarn. It really is. <laughs> it really is. But I just, it did, it did not, this shawl was not meant to be. It just was not meant to be. I think a lot of it was because normally I can see myself wearing the shawl and as I was looking at it, as I was knitting on it and messing up left and right because I was new to lace work and I didn't, my biggest issue was I didn't know how to yarn over. Yarn overs are not hard. They're not hard. It's just that if you don't know how to do it, your orientation's going to be wrong. And then when it comes back around and you knit that stitch, it doesn't look right. It doesn't create the right lace work. So I should have really, looked into yarn overs more before I did this, but I didn't. And now I've learned. <laughs> and I, it, there's, there's no way out. My stitch count is so screwy. The pattern's so screwy. The, it, like the little flowers pattern on here is all screwed up. So it just, you know, it needed to be done. But will I do this pattern again? Maybe. It's a very interesting shape. It's because it's kind of a sort of a little triangle wrap, but it has like little jagged edges to it. So, no. I think I would really like doing it in some of my Multiverse Nature yarn because I do love all the colors from my Multiverse Nature yarn. I would wear them. So I feel like that is more doable in my opinion. But now I feel like I'm rambling like crazy, but yeah, I hope you guys are doing well, and I hope that you get your project all ripped back and frogged because then you can use that wool for a project you will love and use instead of having it linger and and have have yourself be sad about it. So 
I hope I motivated you because you guys motivated me by allowing me to do the video. So I look forward to catching up with you soon. Happy frogging. I'm almost there guys. We're almost there. <laughs> I've got just this little patch left. So I, I hope you guys finish what you're up to and I look forward to chatting with you soon. Take care. Bye.